Hey Yogi, welcome to class. If you are new to the channel, I'm Re and this is Drakey. And if you're returning, welcome back. We love practicing with you on YouTube. Uh, for this class, this vinyasa practice, you're not gonna need anything per se. Maybe grab a block and a strap if you have those things. If not, neither of them are, we may not even use them, but they're just handy to have. So just pop them near your mat if you do have them. Set yourself up ready to practice and then meet me in a child's pose. We'll start in child's pose today. Take the knees nice and wide, lift the tailbone a little bit, and just take whatever child's pose is gonna feel good for you in these early moments. So that might be quite an active child's pose where you kind of keep the hips lifted. Uh, or you may want to lower, you know, the chest towards the mat, the butt towards the heels. So whatever feels good for you here. Start to tune into a bit of a deeper breath here, a bit more of a, of a conscious breath rather than that autopilot breathing that you do all the time, probably when you're not on your yoga mat. Just start to take some nice, strong inhales and extend on your exhale. Notice if you feel any movement or change in how the hips are feeling now that you've been in this place for a little while. See if you can use your exhale to just soften through the hips a little bit more. Taking whatever wriggles and micro movements are calling to you that feel nice in your body, on your mat, in your space. Two more breaths wherever you are. On your next inhale, roll yourself forward, come into a tabletop position. So hands underneath the shoulders and knees underneath the hips. And then just start to take some circles with the wrists or over the wrists, I should say. And we're really just looking here to warm up the wrists, but also to just start to take some nice movement, real unstructured movement through the spine, the hips, your neck. Just moving however feels good and natural to you. Gripping the mat with the fingers, making sure that you're transferring weight all across both hands, just so that we nicely get these wrists warm. Maybe pad the mat, lifting a hand and lowering it and changing the position, almost like moving cat cow potentially. Whatever feels nice here, there's very little kind of instruction. This is more kind of guidance for sparking an idea of how you might want to move today. Nice, and then from here, turn the palms so that the fingers are facing backwards towards the knees. We'll take a reversed hand cat cow. On an inhale, you're gonna lower the belly, lift the tailbone, lift your heart, shine your heart forward. On an exhale, reverse it, cat pose. Inhale, pull through, feel how you've isolated some work there at the shoulder. And exhale, tuck your tail. Inhale, lift the tail, lift your heart. And exhale, push back. Nice, release, untuck the toes, sit back to the heels. From here, hands clasp at the center of the chest. Inhale, feel your chest slightly push into those hands, feeling alive and awake. As you exhale, turn the palms and start to push through the shoulders, chin to chest. Inhale, roll. The hands up, the drishti will lift to follow your hands. Exhale, 
Bring it down through the center, puff into the shoulders, chin to chest. Inhale, drishti lift with your hands, come up. And exhale. Nice. Hands behind the feet on an inhale. Just lift the hips. It doesn't need to be like a crazy back bend here. We're just looking to open through the front body. Turn on those shoulders a little bit. Exhale, lower. Setting ourselves up for flying integration. Taking the hands either side of the knees so that the uh, first finger is kind of pointing off the mat diagonally and your thumbs are going up the mat. So it's just going to create a little bit of rotation in the upper arms, which we're looking for here. Inhale to prepare. On an exhale, lift your hips roughly as high as your knees. So feel free to play around there with that. Chin to chest and then draw your belly button back. You're puffing through your upper back all the way down to your tail, which is tucked. Be here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and lower on one. Nice. Come forward and tap the feet if that was a little bit much. And then tuck your toes, hands flat to the mat, lift your hips up and back. Ardha Mukha, Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Feel this dog out. Feel free to take any movements of the neck, of the hips that feel nice. Grip your mat with your fingers. And then find some stillness here. Feel free to put a little bend in the knees that that just allows you to tilt your tailbone nice and high to the sky. Squeeze your inner armpits together. Nice. From here, inhale, lift heels, bend knees, roll forward into a high plank. Exhale, take a push up and roll back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, lift heels, bend knees, roll forward, high plank. Exhale, push up, roll back to dog. Roll forward, high plank. Exhale, push up. Downward facing dog. One more, just like that, roll forward, high plank. Exhale, push up and roll back to downward facing dog. Nice. Hopefully you're starting to feel a little bit of heat building there. Inhale, lift your right leg nice and high. Exhale, right foot to the outside of the right hand. Lower the back knee. Inhale, reach that right arm up. Take a twist. Twisted lizard. Just feel the hips start to move into a bit of space here now. And then exhale. Plant your right hand, tuck your back toes if they weren't, and then start to lift your hips, slowly working to straighten through the legs. So straight is relative. We say that all the time in this practice, but it's really important to remember. Rebend that right knee. Inhale, take your left foot to the outside of the left hand and rise into active squat. Exhale, draw your hands in to stand. Inhale, reach up, look up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, come back through active squat. Inhale, hands to the mat, bend your elbows, step your right foot back and your left foot back, downward facing dog. Roll forward into high plank. Either drop the knees or take a full push up and then drop knees. Drop forearms, slide on in to upward facing dog. Take a moment and then exhale, cruise back. Downward facing dog, left leg nice and high to the sky. And then left knee bends, left foot to the outside of the left hand. Drop the right knee down, 
Inhale, sweep that left arm up and back. Take the twist. Just notice the differences, if there are any, from one side to the other. And then exhale, left hand plants, back toes tuck. Work to straighten through into that modified pyramid pose. Don't worry about driving the back heel down. Think more about the hinge here from that left hip to the bottom of the left side of your belly. Rebend that left knee. Right foot to the outside of the right hand. Inhale, active squat. Knees go wide, chest is long. Exhale, draw it in to stand. Inhale, reach up, look up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, active squat. Inhale, hands to the mat. This time left foot goes back and right foot goes back, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift heels, bend knees, roll forward, high plank. Exhale, vinyasa. You can take whatever vinyasa you like here. Come through into upward facing dog. And exhale, roll back, downward facing dog. Nice. The right leg lifts, three leg dog, nice and high. Deep bend of that left knee, drive your right knee into your chest, drop your right foot. Next to your right thumb, lower your back knee. Inhale, reach up, Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Exhale, cactus your arms, lift your chest. Inhale, back to centre. And exhale, cactus. Draw your elbows down to your hips. Nice. From here, plug that left big toe into the mat. Rise up. Find warrior two. Take an inhale. And then on an exhale, find that warrior two position. Draw your belly button in. Tuck your tailbone. Vira Bhadrasana two. Nice, from here the left hand will go to the mat. Spin onto the side of the left toes and then find your wild thing or your vashistasana. Maybe you wanna drop the right toes and take flip dog. And then close everything off. Back to downward facing dog. Inhale, lift heels, bend knees, roll forward, high plank. Exhale, vinyasa. Take whichever vinyasa you need. So maybe you're dropping the knees today. Maybe you're just holding a really strong high plank. Whatever you want to do is probably the best thing for you to do. Left leg will lift nice and high. Three leg dog. Bend your right knee, bend your left knee, left foot next to left thumb. Drop the right knee down and inhale rise up and janayasana low lunge exhale cactus your arms draw your elbows down towards your hips inhale reach up exhale cactus nice from here plug the right toe in rise up drop your right heel find warrior two so make sure you sink into a good depth here. So really drop that left hip down, plug your left femur bone back into its socket by scrubbing that left foot down and back. So there's a lot to think about there, but essentially you're working down and back. Imagine you could drag the mat together. Nice, take an inhale. On an exhale, the right hand goes to the mat. Turn onto the outside of the right foot and find your side plank. Any variation of Vashistasana. Maybe you want to drop that left foot and come in to your flip dog. But again, do whatever feels, feels good. You might be feeling the challenge in that side plank and you want to hold it. And then inhale, close everything off. Come back to downward. Facing dog, nice. The right leg's gonna lift, three leg dog. And then right foot to the outside of the right hand. From here, 
Bring your left knee into the chest. Kick your left foot up towards your right hand. And then send your left foot back. Coming into this kind of funky low lunge. And then drive your hips up and back. Working for that modified pyramid pose. Again, just really try and find your hinge here. So if that means a bend in the right knee or the left knee or both, that's cool. Plug that right hip back. Nice. And then re-bend that right knee, drop the back knee down and come into Ardha Hanumanasana, half split. Slow the breath down here. Try and tune in, tune into this hinging motion. The more you plug that it's that same scrubbing action, that right heel into the mat and plugging back into your center. You're going to feel that hamstring work and fire. Rebend that right knee. Inhale, rise up, Anjaneyasana. On an exhale, cactus the arms, drive your left heel into your butt. Might feel really, really tough on that left hamstring. Be here for five, four, three, two, on one, release. Come back into that modified pyramid. Whew, let that left leg have a minute, have a moment. And then re-bend that right knee. Come back into three leg dog. From here, bend your left leg, bend your elbows, come into upward facing dog. Linger here for just a moment, open through the front body and exhale, push back, downward facing dog, left leg nice and high, three leg dog, deep bend of left and right knee, left foot on the outside of the left hand, reach your left hand forward, right knee to the chest and then kick your right foot to your left hand, swivel it all the way back, replant the hands and then come into a modified pyramid on the left side thinking about that hinge here rebend that left knee drop your right knee to the mat push back into a half half split Ardha Hanumanasana The more you drive that left thigh bone back into the socket, as you push the right hip forward, the more you're gonna feel the work. Rebend that left knee, drop the left toes to the mat. Inhale, rise up, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, cactus your arms as you drive your right heel into your butt. Hold it there, be here for five, four, three, two, on one, release, and then straighten or work to straighten through both legs. If you ended up in Cramp City there, that's cool, that happens a lot. That active, active stretch or that active motion. If you ended up in a bit of cramp city there, that's fine. We're just really trying to get activation through the muscles. Nice, re-bend the left knee. Take that left leg up to three leg dog. And then deep bend of the elbows and the right leg as you come through into upward facing dog. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Good job. Moving into our awakening navigation series. Lift your right leg nice and high. Three leg dog. And then take your right foot on the outside of your right hand. Drop the back knee down. Inhale, sweep your right arm up and back. Taking hold of that left foot if you've got it if not you're just working to bring the left foot in or if you have your strap here it's a great place to hook the strap on if you want to take the outside of the foot you're going to push 
or kick the foot into the hand, opening up that shoulder. Or you can take the inside of the foot and draw that heel in towards the butt. A good stretch there for the quad on that left leg. So take whatever you need here. And then release that foot, coming into a half split. Again, see if you notice any difference on this side. Ardha Hanumanasana. Plug in that right hip back, scooping and driving the right heel under you, like in the motion. It's not actually going to come under you just yet. And then rebend that right knee, drop the top of that left foot to the back of the mat and just make sure you're not on a tight rope here. You need a bit of space for the hips. And then inhale, lift that left knee off the mat. This may be where you stay. Maybe you wanna come up, bring the hands up onto the right thigh. Maybe you wanna reach the arms up for the full expression of Chandrasana lunge. Think about zipping the inner line of both inner thighs together here. So the legs are zipping in together, scissoring the back leg forward, right leg back. Be here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Slowly lower on one. Nice. From here, maybe um, if you like your block for full Hanumanasana, we're going to take full Hanumanasana or half Hanumanasana. So whatever is going to work for you. And full splits just basically means we just go in a bit deeper than we were in half splits. So if you want to pop a block underneath that right thigh just to help you square off the hips, that's cool. Slowly start to rebend the right knee and draw it back underneath you. So we've got a balance challenge here. So we can either just take a couple, two or three little handstand hops. It doesn't need to be crazy if that sounds crazy to you. Or um, you can take a standing split. So either way, we're going to take a little balance challenge just for a few seconds. So choose your option and go now. Be here for five, four, three, two. Everything lowers on one. Nice. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, deep end of the knees, rise in to chair pose. Utkatasana. Drop your hips low. And then inhale, high onto the ball of the toes. Drop your butt to your heels. Stay here in toes pose or come into Bakasana, crow pose, knees, triceps, triceps, knees, take your drishti out ahead if you've gone there, be here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and drop the feet down, nice, roll yourself up to standing and we'll take a round of circle chair here. So just bending the knees, letting the head drop, and then rolling up and down through your spine. Just trying to unblock any stuck energy. Don't think about it, just, just do it. Just be in the moment. Nice. 
come to settle, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, take your left, uh, no, your right foot, sorry, to the back of the mat, lower the back knee down. Take your foot a little bit wider and then inhale, sweep your left arm up and back for that bound lizard. So again, you either take the outside of the foot, you really kick into the foot so that you are working to open through the shoulder, or you take the inside of the foot and you work to drive the heel into the butt. So try and take whatever you did last time, but be active here. So this isn't like a, you know, we're chilling out. We're trying to activate through whatever muscles you're working, whether you're kicking into the hands to work that shoulder, whether you're driving this heel into your butt to turn on that quad. Be intentional with it, make it count. Slowly release that right foot. And then coming into a half split here. Ardha Hanumanasana. I always like to have a little bend in my knee, in my left knee for this. Just helps me to really work that hinge and find that depth, find that territory that I want to move into for opening up this left hamstring. From here, you're going to re-bend that left knee and tuck the back toes. Inhale, lift your right knee off the mat. Stay here if that feels available. Maybe you take the hands up onto the thigh. Maybe you reach the arms up. Chandrasana lunge. Think about dragging that left heel back and zipping the inner line of those legs together. Be here for 10 Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and lower on one. My goodness, <laughs> that's always a killer. I always think of that pose as just this really sneaky <laughs> killer pose. From here, start to wriggle yourself into your expression of full Hanumanasana, full splits. And remember, you can use the blocks here. You can go all the way to the mat if you can. Think about driving the right hip forward, plugging that left hip back. You're gonna feel the work in the hips there. And then re-bend that left knee and drag your left foot back underneath you. So we've got our balance challenge on this side. So whatever you had a go of inside one, have a go of inside two. So standing splits, great option. Try and square the hips off if you're doing that. So the tendency is in standing splits that we'll, we'll open a hip out to allow the leg to go higher, which is, you know, lovely, looks lovely. Um, but just in this one, if you go in there, think about squaring the hips off. So the leg won't go as high, but you're gonna really feel the benefit there. If you wanna try a few little handstand hops, then do that. So do that now. Be here for five, four, three, two. Everything lowers on one. Nice. Deep bend of the knees, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Deep bend of the knees, coming into chair pose. And then lift your heels, lower your butt to your heels. Stay here for toes pose or come into crow pose again. Maybe you're working on catching some air. I'll put a card in this at this point actually for a Bakasana tutorial I've got. Maybe you're working the crow, maybe you've got the crow 
and you're working on something funky. But everybody lowers together. Drop your heels. Come all the way up to stand. Nice. So we will we'll take Natarajasana dancer's pose. Um, if you've got your strap, you don't have to use it, but this is a really nice way to work, uh, just really isolate working on the hip, I guess, and really open. So you're gonna put your left foot in the strap. If you don't have the strap, just do it with your hand, that's fine. And then you're gonna bend that left knee, bring that strap around your back like a rucksack or a backpack, and then kick and lift. Really focus your gaze on something here. Be here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Slowly release on one. Good job. I nearly lost it within the first. Within the first second there, and that is the name of the game. Sometimes you have your balance. Sometimes you are a bit of a one-sided yogi. So I'm a left-sided yogi. <laughs> anyway, that, that's been and gone. Setting yourself up for the second side. So plug in that right, uh, sorry, left foot into the mat. If you've got your strap, then bend your right knee and then take your strap behind you, slowly start to lift and kick into the strap. Try to square the hips off here and hold. Remember to breathe, Natta Rajasana. Holding for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, slowly with control, release on one. Lose your strap if you had it. We are, I'm pretty sure we're done with it. <laughs> nice. From here, inhale, reach your arms up, look up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, Urdhva Uttanasana. Exhale, plant your hands, step your left foot back, step your right foot back, and vinyasa, last one. We're on the home stretch now, yogis. Back to downward facing dog. Nice, from here, you're gonna step or jump your feet to the outside of your hands. Coming in to passive squat. Feel free to rock from side to side here. And we've done a lot in the hips today, but mainly, mainly kind of hip extension. So just notice how it feels here to have the hips in external rotation. Feel free to bounce, lift your heart, lift your spine. And then we'll take some circle wheel before we start to close the practice. So, Right hand will sweep behind you, lift your hips, lift your left hand up, and then switch in sides. Left hand plants, right arm lifts up and over, switch in sides again. This time, if you want to go all the way over, you can, but just make sure, I always say this, but it's a quick switch. So try not to get stuck. So as my left hand plants, I'm reaching up and over. As this right hand goes down, I'm switching. My teacher always says it's a round trip, not one way. Let's do one more. I can't remember how many we've done. If you're going all the way, quick switch. Round trip, return flight. We don't want to get stuck. <laughs> And then drop your knees, uh, drop your butt to the mat. I don't know what I'm saying today. And then slowly roll yourself down to the mat. Nice. We're going to finish with an Urdhva Danyasana. Full wheel. Your legs are lovely and warm for it. So 
If you want to take full wheel, you can. If you want to take Setu Bandhasana bridge pose, then feel free to do that as well. Choose your experience now and set yourself up. Make sure if you've come into Urdhva Dhanurasana, you've got weight in the hands and the feet, and you're really pushing your chest through your arms. Be here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and lower. On one, come down. Whew, nice work. From here, if you've got your block, grab it. If you don't, no worries. Maybe you can grab a rolled up blanket. But pop your block under your sacrum and just let your legs go long for a moment. Maybe the arms want to go up and overhead. And just chill, chill for a second. If you don't have a block here and you think, mm, I really feel like that lovely front body opener, then take a reclined hero's pose. So sitting on the shins, feet will go a bit wider than your butt, your butt will lower down and then go down maybe onto your forearms and lift your chest or go all the way. Either way, you're going to get the same action uh, if you don't have the block for the reclined uh, or supported bridge, sorry with extended legs and actually the reclined hero I'm going to do it myself now because that actually might feel super nice it might not so this is where you need to listen to your body and ask it what does it need now and try and listen <laughs> I think we often ask but uh, we don't always listen to the answer my dad used to say, I don't know why you ask me this question or my opinion, you're going to do what you want to anyway. And if that sounds like you sometimes on your yoga mat, then for this particular practice, I want you to surrender to whatever the body is suggesting. So as I was in that supported bridge and I'm chatting you through this reclined hero pose, I was thinking, mm, that sounds like really nice. It sounds like my quads and my chest would really enjoy that. And so I switched asanas, and that is the beauty of this practice. It's just about exploring and changing your mind and hopefully asking your body a question and listening to the answer. <laughs> Maybe. Start to soften here. We're going to take about four breaths. If you've still got your block under you and it's starting to irritate, then remove the block and come down. But if it feels nice to keep that block there and the legs extended, then just stay as you are. Two more breaths here. Start to surrender now. Surrender to your body. Let your body be heavy. I always visualize my body being really heavy into the mat and my spirit getting lighter and lighter. <sighs> Slowly from here, if you were in the supported bridge, you've got quite a nice journey back now into Shavasana, so removing that block. If you were in hero's pose, you're gonna to have to come out of that and make your way down into your shavasana anyway you're gonna get there maybe you want to take supta baddha konasana soles of the feet together knees apart it's always a bit of a favorite of mine after a practice if it feels nice take one hand to the heart one to the belly close down the eyes relax your jaw visualize that physical body, the vessel, just sinking into the mat. Let it be heavy. Let it surrender. So if you're holding on to any part of the body, even if it's just your eyebrows, your jaw, your tongue, 
anything, just let it go. Try to let it go, try to release and surrender. And maybe as you take these final breaths in Shavasana, you can visualize your spirit nice and light. Awake. This is where I leave you. Please stay in your Shavasana for as long as you have. Let that spirit be alive and awake and lift, lifted. And let your body feel heavy. As always, it's an absolute pleasure to practice with you here on YouTube. If you did enjoy the class, please like and leave me a comment. And I hope to see you on the mat soon. Thank you, Yogi.